Welcome back everyone, this is Sweet Battle Scars again. Now I'm back with another unboxing video. Today we're gonna be looking at the Capcom Figure Builder Volume 10. Finally have it with me. Took a while to get, uh, so I apologize about that. I know a lot of you guys were awaiting this unboxing and looking forward to it. So uh, thank you so much for waiting. It's finally here now. Uh, so we get our standard uh, Figure Builder box. I'll just quickly show you the box. Won't spend too much time on it. Uh, it's again, regular figure builder box with the monsters uh, being showcased on the sides, the monsters that we get in this volume. And uh, we're going to get to open it. So we get some pretty awesome monsters in this set. Uh, of course, this is from uh, Monster Hunter, uh, monsters that we get in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. So it's going to be a uh, very exciting volume and, uh, you know, perfect timing to, to do this unboxing. We were only just a couple of weeks away from Monster Hunter for Ultimate finally being released in the West. So I'm very happy about that. Very, very much looking forward to it. So um, this volume also includes a lot of the figures that have uh, been featured in other games. So a lot of them are coming, are making a comeback. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the figures and I'll speak, uh, you know, of each figure and then we'll take a look at uh, the details and, uh, you know, kind of maybe review what games uh, those appeared, uh, the, each monster appear in. So, uh, like I said, it feels like, uh, it almost feels like this is an unboxing of, uh, of a figure builder that might have come out years ago when the original Monster Hunter came out because, uh, or, you know, or like Monster Hunter Freedom 2 and Monster Hunter 2 for, for that matter, because like I said, a lot of these monsters are pretty old. So I'm going to switch my angle here a bit so you guys can get a better view. And first off, we get a Karen. Now, let's see. I know that there are two Karens here. And I believe uh, one of them is uh, Kieran in hardcore mode, I think. Uh, is that what his, uh, like his uh, special mode is called? When uh, his uh, fur gets, uh, yeah, very spiky and like, well, in this case, very translucent and transparent, as you guys can see here. Uh, if my camera would focus, I'm going to put my hand in the background. I'm sorry. I don't have any other better, another better background for this. So you guys can see here, it's uh, Kieran and... Uh, if you guys can see, you guys can kind of see my hand uh, behind the uh, clear plastic. This is translucent plastic on its fur here. It's very uh, spiky, very uh, agitated. So I think this is Kieran in his uh, hardcore mode. And of course we can uh, wrap him up in this uh, like electricity or like lightning. We can put this around him. Kind of like the how the box displays there. There you go. So, uh, kind of like this, I guess. We'll just, uh... I guess there's really no right way of doing this, so we'll just kind of leave it like that. There you go. Whatever. So, uh, he comes with, uh, your standard, uh, figure builder base, and, uh, these bases never get old. I love these bases. And, uh, he comes with Two little pegs on his legs, and then one for uh, the actual lightning around his body. So let's see, he feels kind of... Uh, his legs are very thin. Uh, luckily, it's, uh, you know, he's made out of very flexible plastic, so uh, don't be afraid. Uh, his legs won't break. But you guys can see there that uh, he stands on the base very nicely. I'm going to push this back so you guys can... And the, the, I think the camera is having a hard time focusing on him because he's uh, white. And, uh, of course, I, I always use my white background so you guys can see the figures, uh, you know, really well there. And so, uh, the camera might have a hard time focusing, but there's Kieran. Very nice detail, uh, paint job is nice. I really like the, uh, the scales on his body. Of course, he, weirdly enough, has scales all over his body. So, uh, he has very strong skin. Uh, so, of course, he's making an appearance for... Uh, he's making a comeback from previous uh, Monster Hunter games. I think, if I remember correctly, Monster Hunter uh, Freedom 2, I believe, and Monster Hunter 2. Uh, you can correct me if you like on the comments, in the comment section below. I, but I think uh, I think that's where he's from, uh, Monster Hunter Freedom. Uh, so, there he is. Very nice figure. Uh, glad to have Kieran in the mix. We're going to take a look at the second figure. And it is the uh, Emerald subspecies. I mean, sorry, the uh, Congolala species. Sorry, I called them. I called them Emerald. 
And, uh, but, uh, that's because he is called the Emerald Kongolala. And he is, uh, appearing in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, of course. So he's very simple, very nice figure, actually. I really like the Kongolala figures. He's just so funny. I like him a lot. Uh, very nice color on his fur. So there you go, my camera just focused. So you guys can see him there. Uh, very, very nice details on his fur there. Very nice green color. I think they, they pretty much got the color. I like how there's like a black undertone. So they kind of went over the green as kind of like a, you know, like a light wash over the black. So that's why you, we get that like very deep fluorescent green on, on top of it. Uh, so it, his fur looks very nice. Uh, his horn is nicely painted there. Uh, the mushroom is really nicely painted. Some very nice, uh, airbrushing there. And his tail is very flexible. So the little mushroom can, uh, Move so we can see his face, and there's his beautiful face. Very nice figure. Like, of course, his, uh, his belly is nicely done also, nicely rendered. And the cast is always very clean, as you, we can expect from these figures. Very clean cast, uh, you know, very nicely uh, cleaned and uh, prepared. Craftsmanship is always very good on these figures. So there's uh, Emerald Kongolala, and uh, we're gonna set him aside. And uh, look at the next figure. So in this next box, I'm gonna set the boxes maybe on my floor because uh, I don't want to run out of space here. All right. So in this next box, we have um, Low Prey. Well, I think we have a Low Prey and a Low Drome. Yeah, it seems like. I thought it was uh, two low preys, but no. It's uh, one low prey, which is the smaller one here. Uh, you guys can see that he's got a very glossy finish on him. Low prey and uh, low drum, which is uh, like the uh, the bigger version. It's like a Yagi and a Great Yagi. Or a Yagi and a Great Yagi, whatever. But uh, the smaller version, the little the little guy that hasn't evolved yet. It's like uh, Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard, right? So... There they are, and uh, these are always kind of funny because they're so tiny, they're very flexible, they're very soft, so it's kind of hard to get them on the base. I always have a hard time uh, getting these guys on their bases, so I always kind of just uh, kind of fake it. I don't know exactly how they go on their base. It's really hard to get them in there, I can tell you that much. Yep. There we go, I'm having a hard time already. Probably not gonna uh, spend much time with this. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, it's hard to figure out. If you've seen my previous videos, it's always, you guys can see that I always have a hard time placing these kinds of monsters on the base. Just because they're so soft and they're, you know, they, they kind of go all over the place. But I think I got it. Could it be? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I'm not gonna waste your time with that. It, you know, it takes some time. You have to place their legs. And you can see here. Come on, focus. Camera. Uh, okay, there you go. You guys can see that the feet are very, very thin. The uh, camera doesn't want to focus. Very thin and very flexible. So it's kind of hard to... Uh, get it in here correctly and they just kind of slide in those little slots I got uh, low drum in there kind of in a kind of funny way I, I gotta go back and fix it but you have an idea of, of how they stand on their base and uh, low drum looks very nice I really like the paint job on him and I like the uh, glossy finish that they gave him I'm gonna get him off the uh, off the base so you guys can see it better there's low drum and uh, paint job is, is nice and clean for uh, such a small figure. And these are very small figures. You guys can see that they fit in the palm of my hand very, very easily. So uh, there they are. Nice set of uh, figures there. Next box. We're going to set these guys aside there. Oh, here we go. Here is, uh, I think, uh, regular Kirin. So we've got another Kirin. It would have been nice if we would have gotten the uh, Kirin subspecies, but I guess they didn't want to give us, uh, you know, the other Kirin, the subspecies, the darker one. Uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's just Kirin subspecies, but uh, it's the darker one. 
um, but I guess not. So we got two Karens, exactly same, uh, pretty much exactly the same paint job. You guys can see there exactly the same figure, except uh, clear plastic used for his uh, fur in the back there. And then on this one, let's put Kongolala there. My camera keeps focusing on Kongolala. And on this one, is uh, in, it's an opaque white paint on the uh, fur. So I think uh, this is Ker Karen in his uh, regular state. And the other one with the clear plastic is uh, Karen in his uh, hardcore stage or hardcore mode when he goes uh, all crazy and stuff and powerful and stuff and, and lots of lightning and stuff so uh, he comes with his little lightning uh, detail also which is very nice something like that doesn't really matter we're just gonna place it there so there it is this is the other Kirin uh, paint job is pretty much the same color is exactly the same the exact same pose exact same uh, cast so there you go two currents in uh, different stages different modes well the horn on this one is also clear and this one is uh, again painted with an opaque color so differences there there you go so two currents in this set nice I guess I'm gonna take a look at the next box gonna open it here to the side all right uh, look at this guy so this guy will take uh, some minor assembly he looks pretty good It's usually not very difficult. Uh, I've always covered this in uh, every unboxing that I do of uh, you know figure builder figures, but uh, I really like the mechanical joints that they give us. Uh, you know, I never get tired of uh, kind of uh, complimenting uh, you know what they do with their figures, and uh, this is no different. So uh, we just put uh, Gypsaros's wing in there, and then the other one has the peg there that should fit in there nicely and uh, you know sometimes they snap together but sometimes they're not quite so snug so here we go this is the Gypseros Gypseros I think it's uh, you know people pronounce it differently I call it Gypseros or Gypseros either way um, he should set on his base like so and this is of course the subspecies I believe because the color is slightly different and I forget what volume the other one came in but uh, there is already a uh, Gypseros in, uh, in another uh, yeah he's gonna his this is another instance where uh, his legs are very flexible so they're kind of they're a little difficult to get in there but uh, I think I got it there we go so there is uh, Gypseros I really like the paint. Uh, let's scoot these guys up. Let my camera focus on them. Really like the, the purplish paint on his skin. It gives him a very nice feel. Uh, he's not so glossy. He's not as glossy. He's definitely not as glossy as uh, the Lodrum. But uh, he, he does have like a satin finish on him. And uh, it looks, uh, I, I guess it's kind of kind of glossy. But he looks very nice. So uh, here is the purple Gypsaros. Nice, nice clean cast. Uh, he looks very nice. Or am I wrong? Did we get a Gypsaros in the previous volume? Maybe we were still gonna get one. I don't remember exactly, but I, I'm pretty sure we already got one. I'm sorry, my memory is failing me, but I, I'm pretty sure we got one already. Anyway, so there's the purple Gypsaros. Very nice figure, very nice size. I really love the pose on this one. Uh, I'm very, very pleased with the pose that they gave him. And there's his flexible tail again, flexible plastic. I really like the pose that they gave him, so... Uh, very uh, action oriented uh, next box uh, I'm gonna start spitting it up here uh, so I don't take much time I'm whoa this is a big one and we've got an elder dragon in the mix 
All right, so here we have... Uh, sorry, it's kind of hard to get him out. He's big. Here we have Kashala Deora. Or Kushala Deora. Whatever you want to... However you want to pronounce it is fine. Uh, technically, it's a U, so I guess it's Kushala or Kashala. I don't know, but uh, he looks uh, pretty badass. And, uh, well, I should mention, uh, these wings are super thick. And, of course, there's his uh, signature metallic uh, skin, his metallic finish. And I gotta say, they use, like, uh... Huh. They use, like, a... Uh... can't tell the color exactly. It's very... It's very glossy and, um, but it's a very nice metallic finish. It's almost like a, it's not a brass finish. It's a, kind of like a, uh, like a silver finish. The camera is uh, picking it up a little differently, but it looks very silvery, uh, you know, to my eye here as I'm looking at it. But it's very nice nonetheless. And, uh, I gotta tell you, he's heavy. I, the wings are very solid. Usually, for example, like, like the Gypseros. I don't know if you can tell, the wing is very thin, very flexible. His wings are not so flexible. They're semi-flexible, but they're super thick. So a lot of uh, plastic there, a lot of material went into making this guy. And of course, he just snaps together like so. Mechanical joints there, nice mechanical joints. There is uh, Kushala Deora. Very nice. Uh, he's in a flying pose. Oh man, I really like this figure. He's in a very nice pose. Let me give you a close-up of uh, the details there. So he's in a very nice pose. He's kind of like, uh, you know, just flying through the air. Uh, very nice cast. Oh, the, I'm crazy about this paint job. This is a very nice paint job. So we're going to... Uh, he comes with a little peg for his base. I guess uh, it should go... All right, so I'm going to try to uh, put it in there. All right, so there we go. I think uh, it snapped together, and there you go. So he's uh, he's kind of in an up upward uh, position. He's uh, starting to fly through the air. He's uh, lifting from the ground in a very uh, triumphant pose. Very nice. Oh, I'm oh man, this this figure alone really makes the set. This figure looks amazing. And uh, yeah, I really like how the camera's picking up the uh, metallic paint. It is uh, changing it a little bit, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it looks fantastic. Look at the detail on those wings, uh, very nice. Uh, the joint pretty much disappears, uh, you can't really tell where it is. You can tell a little bit, but uh, it pretty much disappears. And uh, the, every detail here, the cast is uh, super clean. It's been nicely cleaned up, no flashing, no residue from the mold. And, uh, yeah, the, the paint job is just superb. Oh, yeah, this figure is freaking fantastic. I really recommend this figure. Really awesome. It looks, it's going to look fantastic in uh, any collection. So we're going to put them aside. Yeah, well, way to go, uh, Capcom. Kudos uh, on that figure. Kushala de Ora, they really did a good job. All right, next up, it's the Red Ketsu. Again, making a comeback from uh, previous entries in Monster Hunter. I think he's also from uh, Monster Hunter Freedom, if I remember correctly, I think Freedom 2 or uh, Monster Hunter 2. He's been in a few games. So here is the Red Ketsu. Or maybe it's just been Ketsu that's been in uh, different games, but no, I think uh, I think Red Ketsu is also making a comeback. And you can see him there. I'm going to put him on the base so you can see him better. So he has a very solid uh, pose. It's just kind of flat on the ground. Let's see if I can... Uh... Okay, I was doing it wrong. Here we go. Usually helps to... Uh, there's usually a peg that's bigger than the others. So it, just, it usually helps to just figure out where the big peg goes. And then it'll just uh, help you uh, figure out where exactly the legs go. And so again, very flexible legs, so they're kind of hard to snap into the... Kind of hard to make the pegs snap into the little slots, you know, below its its paws, its feet, or its legs. There's the red ketsu. Or kezu. I guess there's 
technically not a T in there. A uh, very simple figure, very simple pose. Uh, paint job is, uh, you know, pretty good. Uh, it's very simple. Again, it's, uh, you know, really the texture that makes this figure. You can see the texture on his skin. Looks rather nice. But the paint job itself is uh, pretty simple. Just uh, two colors. Your red and a little bit of uh, air brushing there with a darker, uh, kind of like purple color, almost black. Uh, very nice nonetheless. I like it. So yeah, there you go, Red Kudzu. Uh, also featured in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate and uh, making a comeback from Monster Hunter G, I think it was. Monster Hunter G and uh, Monster Hunter 2, uh, or Monster Hunter Freedom 2, I think. Anyway, let's move on to the uh, next boss box. And uh, actually, actually, sorry, Red Kudzu also came with this uh, um, like lightning detail that you can uh, put on him. So uh, it should just go anywhere, kind of on all over his body. Gonna make it lock in some places. Anyway, it's just gonna stay there. I don't know. He's always a pain to fight. I, I don't like fighting Ketsu's. Kind of annoying. But uh, there he is. Nice figure. <clears throat> Almost done here. Uh, we're moving on to the next figure, and uh, this is a nice one actually. And uh, I know for a fact that we have a one of these already in a previous uh, in a previous volume. Let's just get them out of the uh, plastic bag. And uh, here we go. So here is the figure. It's a uh, young Katku. Did I say that right? Yeah, I think I did. So, uh, very nice color. I, I really like this. Uh, kind of like, it's like a light blue, uh, like a cobalt color, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, the, uh, young Katku has, uh, has two, uh, subspecies, I think. Uh, and this is one of them. This is the blue young Katku. So, uh, because I, I was almost confused, uh, I think there's a darker one, right? Like one that looks a little purplish. But uh, this one is definitely the uh, blue young Katku. I think... Uh, wait, am I thinking of the same one? No, okay, sorry. I think I'm uh, I think I'm mistaken. No, th there's only one subspecies. So this is the young Katku. The blue y young Katku. And uh, he looks very nice. So his legs, again, nice mechanical joints. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, a different monster, the uh, the young Garuga, but I don't know if that's technically a young Katku. Might be related to it. And uh, yeah, his legs are a little flimsy; they uh, fall apart easily. <laughs> and uh, he is also making a uh, comeback from uh, previous games, so there he is, nicely standing on his base, uh, making a return from uh, Monster Hunter Freedom. Nice close-up. Colors are nice, I really like the blue that they gave him. And of course he has this little little ball that he carries around, you can maybe just lay on a, on his on his base there, you know, just Kind of like that, or uh, you can kind of snap it into its mouth. He can actually, he can actually hold it, like so. Very nice figure. So, got the blue Yan Katku, and we have the regular Yan Katku from a previous uh, volume. I forget what number it is, but I'm looking at it right now on my shelf, and there he is. And last but not least, is another uh, monster that really makes this volume worth it. We have none other than uh, Teostra. Of course, he is also in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. And uh, he also requires some assembly. But not too heavy. There's uh, the mechanical joints on his wing. Just snap it right into place. 
it's a very thin wing, so I gotta be careful not to break it. I I kind of forced it a little bit, but I really needed to get in there. So you can see that it's very nice. The joint almost disappears. You can't really tell where it is. And uh, yeah, so this one is very well designed. I like it. Uh, next part is his tail. There you go. The joint almost also pretty much disappears. You can kind of see it there. It's a little more pronounced than the rest of the lines, but I mean, it pretty much disappears. And uh, let's see, he has uh, three pegs. I don't know why they gave him four, though. That's weird. I mean, the, the base has uh, four holes, but uh, there are only three little pegs on him. I don't know, I guess there must be an extra one for something. I wonder... No, he... Uh... Oh, wait, he does have a little base here. That's what the other one is for. There's a little black base here. That I think kind of... I guess uh, you don't want them... Oh, okay, he easily bends. See, if he's on his base without the base, he goes to the side very easily. So we've got this little support here. I guess uh, I gotta figure out how I can uh, do this. Let's put the support first and then let's see how it fits. Oh, okay, so that's very easy. Yeah, okay, you're supposed to uh, put the little uh, support there, the little peg into the base first. And then put the monster on the base. So you can see there, if my camera would focus, there it is, there's the little support right underneath there and it's holding up his belly so now he doesn't really move off to the side he kind of still does but he has a nice support there and it almost disappears so i don't really mind it but uh i guess that's the way it had to be designed i they wanted to have its little its paw here kind of uh risen so he's uh kind of walking you know like stuck in its prey so i guess that's why he needed a little support here if uh, his paw would have been like here i guess maybe he would have he wouldn't need that support but oh well I guess he does and yeah the way he they just post them you know the pose they gave him is uh, like these joints are very th th these joints are pretty much aligned so you can see here it's he's on a straight line so that's why he moves from you know side to side but uh, if they would have kind of spread his legs around uh, I guess it would have been easier for him to just kind of support himself without any kind of uh, using any sort of pegs there but I guess it works uh, it's a nice pose nonetheless there is Teostra. Come on, camera, focus. There he is. Very colorful. Lots of colors on him. Lots of textures also. But uh, a very nice figure nonetheless. Clean cast, like always. And uh, very nicely painted. So uh, there he is, Teostra. So uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, that is uh, that is all of the figures in uh, volume 10 of uh, Monster Hunter. Uh, figure builder figures So uh, I gotta say the highlights of this volume definitely uh, Teostra definitely definitely uh, Kushala Deora and uh, Probably the Karens although I don't it would have been nice to get like the subspecies not just a Karen and then uh, Karen in his hardcore mode and then the other ones are nice too. I really like the uh, blue uh, young Katku but uh, anyway, so a nice volume nonetheless uh, I think uh, if it wasn't for this guy and this guy, uh, I'd be kind of, uh, you know, uh, doubtful about getting this. But uh, yeah, these two monsters uh, are definitely worth it here. Uh, this one really makes the volume, especially this one, the Kushala Deora. So uh, I hope you guys have liked this unboxing. Please comment, like, and subscribe if you have. And uh, stay tuned for more unboxings like this one. So thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time.